Hi everyone, I'm Dan Lakin of Bar Events UK. Usually we do giant TPs, mobile bars and event staff, but I'm sure as you're aware, there's not a lot of that going on at the moment. I just turn my music down in the background. So while we're locked down, I'm going to be running these free live shows weekly with a special guest. Uh, this week we have Declan McGurk from the oldest surviving cocktail bar in the UK, and that's the American bar in the Savoy. Um, if, you want in, if you're watching live, tag someone who you think will be interested in this and tell them why. If you are watching on playback, then if you could hashtag cocktails every day, that would be great. Thank you. So today we're talking all things breakfast. I know it's 8 o'clock at night, but let's face it, during lockdown, sometimes breakfast is the time to drink. Um, so when's too early to start drinking? Well, to imply an answer to that question, we today are going to be making a breakfast martini. Uh, we've already done a Bloody Mary and we've done an espresso martini, which are also great breakfast drinks. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you should drink cocktails every day for breakfast, but on the odd occasion, maybe in the airport, maybe for a spe special occasion, maybe to defeat a hangover, I'd say why not? Just not every day. Although the next time you're at an AA meeting, don't blame the fact that you should drink called breakfast martini on your all-day drinking. Right, so breakfast drinks. They have to be a pick-me-up, and they have to go well with your actual breakfast. So think about the things we've already, we've already made and the things we've already drunk. Uh, as I mentioned before, we've already done Bloody Mary, we've already done Espresso Martini. So the Bloody Mary has spices in, it's got tomato juice in. It's got uh, tomato juice in. Um, tomato juice obviously goes well with, uh, with breakfast. Uh, the spices are, are a bit of a pick-me-up. We've got Espresso Martini, which is an obvious pick-me-up coffee drink in the morning. Um, what what more excuse you need to, to have replacing your coffee with an espresso martini than than that? Uh, breakfast martini. You, people who are making long, you've already got your ingredients. You've already seen that it's made of marmalade. Perfect marmalade on toast. Great great for a, a, a you know a small breakfast with a hangover. I'm sure Paddington would love one if he's an alcoholic. Good old espresso martini. Um, so I'm going to be making this twice over. So if I go a little bit fast, first of all, don't worry, I'm going to do it all again in a sec. Uh, there are two of us in this room. I've got my wife doing all the editing. Not, well, not editing, it's live, but all the production of it. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll do, I'll do the first one, how you might have to at home without the proper equipment. So the first one I'm going to do in my coffee cup. It goes to work. So any, any, any sort of thing you've got, if you haven't got a cocktail shaker at home, just grab your coffee cup, grab your protein shaker, grab whatever's got a lid on it so you can put your ingredients in, put some ice in it, shake it. That's all you want to do. So the ingredients, as I'm hoping you can see just below me here, by the way, it's going to end up in a martini glass, so go grab one if you haven't already got one. We've got gin. The better the gin, the better the drink. There's not a lot of ingredients in this, so the smoother the, the ingredients you can use, the better it's going to taste ultimately. Um, you're not masking any any horrible vodkas with loads of different juices here like they might do in some poor cocktail bars or poor bars and not cocktail bars what we're doing here is we're using fine ingredients to make a fine drink at the end and there's not a lot of ingredients so disregard all my rules that i've stated before which is it ends up being two shots because a breakfast martini doesn't have much sweet and sourings there's not much to lengthen it out at all it's literally well pretty much just straight spirits we're going to start with gin I'm going to put a double measure, measure in. After all, it is breakfast. Excuse my leaky pour spout. First time I've said that. Next up, we've got orange liqueur. If you've got triple sec, use that. But the better orange liqueur you have, the better the drink's going to be. I've got Cointreau. If you've got Grand Marnier, use that. Absolutely fine. And we're doing just under half a shot. But for measuring purposes, you know, just say half a shot. After all, we're making cocktails at home. We're not worried about gross profits. We're not worried about how pissed you're going to get and social drinking and everything else and being responsible. You're making it for yourself. So you, you pour the ingredients that you feel capable with. Make it a quadruple if you want. I didn't say that. Next up is marmalades. So it's about a spoonful, but make it a decent spoonful. You need to get enough sugar in there to balance out the next ingredient, which is lemon, so the sour. So as we've mentioned before, most drinks will be balanced with sweet and sour. 
So it's sweet in this. It's not sugar. It's not gum that we've always used previously. It's literally marmalade, which is pretty much sugar and an orange peel, etc. So it's half a squeeze or half a lime to a lemon squeezed. So again, as we mentioned before, when we juice things fresh for cocktails, if you've got an average size lemon or lime, on average, you're going to get about 25 mil out of it. So great, stick it in. Usually it's the whole lot. For this drink, you only need half of that. So you need about 15 mil, slightly under. So I'm just going to hand juice this straight into my shaker. If you've got any seeds that you can see are likely to fall out, then do it through your hand, catch them. I can't see any seeds in this, so I'm literally just going to pour all of it straight into my shaker. So we've got the sour in there, that's this lemon. We've got the sweet in there, that's the marmalade. We've got the gin in, which is the base spirit. And we've got something else to enhance it, which is the orange liqueur. Orange liqueur is obviously going to go well with the, um, the marmalade. Then we're going to get some ice in. As much ice as you can afford to spare. If you haven't got bags of bags of ice in the freezer, don't use too much. If you're using a three-piece sort of American-style cocktail shaker, that doesn't take as much as it would if you're using a Boston glass and Boston tin. If you're using your coffee shaker or your protein shaker, probably even less. So get your ice in. I'm just going to pop that away. Let me get this hand in. This is my coffee cup lid. Nice and tightly sealed. Shake as hard as you can. You need to get that marmalade right through the drink. You need to get the flavour through the drink. You need to start dissolving that sugar. So shake hard fast for as long as you can. Now, if you're using a coffee shaker, or a coffee shaker, I don't even use it for coffee anymore. If you're using a coffee pot like me, it's never going to freeze on the outside. So don't free, don't shake it until it does, because it won't. On the plus side, you don't have to strain it into anything. Breakfast martini. How you should have it on your way to work. Cheers. Perfect serve. Do you want one, Nora? Yeah, I've got one. Yes. I'll take that any morning. Right. Now I'm going to do it again, but how you should do it. So... We're going to use Boston tin, Boston glass. 50 mils of Bombay. So, easily the most famous marmalade drink to be known. Um, created in 2000 at the library bar in uh, Lansdale, Lansdale Hotel, London. It's um, a similar drink, actually, to the marmalade cocktail which is a great introduction to our next guest, but we'll do that shortly afterwards. Invented by, the marmalade cocktail was invented in the 1920s by Harry Craddock, um, a bit of a legend of the Savoy, and it's re uh, referenced in his book, which is the Savoy cocktail book. Right, more, more sour. So you get the lemon in there. Get the, uh, get the sweet back in there. See the marmalade. The better the marmalade, the better the drink. You buy Morrison's own like we usually do. Not as going to be as tasty. Get a load of ice in there. As much ice you can afford to use. Good hard tap and a good hard shake. Let's give that a tap. So with Declan coming up next, I'm sure we've got some bartenders from not across the UK, but across the globe watching this cocktails at home. We'd love to hear what you're drinking and what you're making at home. We want to we wanna see what's going on around the world. And we'll, I'll come back to that statement in a bit. So the next bit's going to be double strained. We don't want the bits of, uh, of orange zest. We don't want the shards of ice. So strain it through your Hawthorne strainer, strain it then through your tea strainer if you've got one. If not, chuck it all in the glass, as Nick alluded to last week. And that is served. Get rid of my bits. 
So, garnish. If you've got a piece of orange, that's the ideal. I haven't. So, as I've done before, I'm just going to take some of the zest off the lemon. This is a really sharp knife and a previously squeezed lemon, so I'm going to try not to chop the thumb off. And then, just going to make a little slice of it, like this. And then, I'm going to wrap it round, wrap it round a bar spoon, but if you've got a chopstick, that's absolutely fine. Nice tight wrap, I've just broken a bit off. Just creates a little bit of a curl, just to hang on the edge of your glass. There we go. Breakfast martini, if you're going to drink it in the evening. Breakfast martini, if you're going to drink it on your way to work. Mmm. To my fabulous wife and production assistant, Laura. Cheers, guys. So let us know, and also send pictures of these drinks, and let us know what it is you've been doing over the last week. Let us know how you've been filling your time. Let us know your favourite thing to do in the week. We want to know what, you're, what you guys are doing. We're going to be updating you what we're doing through these videos, what people around the world are doing. So, what time is it? Cool. It's nearly. I reckon it's time to introduce someone. So, now let's introduce our next guest. I've been so excited about this. Not only is he the director of bars for the Savoy Hotel in London, but he's done a stint there on the American Bar. In the Mar American Bar. Uh, the American Bar in the Savoy was ranked number one of 50 best bars in the world 2017. Voted World's Best Bar by Spirit Awards. Voted International Bar Best Bar Team by Spirited Awards. Voted Best Hotel by Spirited Awards. Best Hotel, Hotel Bar by Class Magazine. Best Bar in Europe by Mixology Awards. And finally, he's been awarded the Best Bar Manager by Class Magazine. And we've got him live here on today's show. So big, massive thank you and a big welcome to the award-winning Declan McGurk. All right, Dan, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Thanks so much for being here. No worries at all. Thank you for having me on here. It's uh, a privilege and an honour. Unfortunately, the children are in bed asleep. Well, they're in bed. They're probably not asleep. <laughs> so we might have some guests later on if they wake if they come down again. You never know. They may well make a guest appearance. If that happens, then I've got to run, actually, because it'll probably be my turn to put them to sleep. <laughs> so uh, how's lockdown that? treating you anyway, Declan? Huh? How's lockdown treating you anyway? Well, uh, as you can see, uh, cocktails in the conservatory here, but it's very much a classroom. So I, I am uh, uh, garnering my skills as a homeschool teacher. Uh, I'm, the only thing I'm learning through this is I definitely couldn't be a teacher. Um, <laughs> so hats off to everyone who does that. Um, and it, it, of course, feels very strange. Saturday nights, uh, this is a time where uh, normally you'd be working, have worked for the best part of two decades on Saturday nights. Uh, and we're not at the moment. It's not our choice. We're all closed down. Uh, and yeah. I think it's, uh, it's very important for us to obviously wait for the time to be right Uh but just to continue believing that we're a really important part of culture. Uh, and that's why I like doing things like this, um, because it shows that whilst everyone at home is a lockdown bartender, um, there's still some bartenders out there ready to go and just serve you in a bar. And uh, making drinks at home is great, but even I prefer going to a bar and getting someone else to do it. <laughs> Nick, I mean, a lot of people watching this are going to be bartenders and they're going to be people at home that love to make cocktails. And to aspire to even do a job like yours is, is you know, inconce inconceivable for a lot of people. What is it like running the bars at Savoy? It's great. You know, the the whole building has become a big part of our family. Um, and you probably can't see it. It's probably off site. But there's a, a poster. We do Joe Wicks every morning and he says yes. a homework saying you have to make a poster um, about where you live. So Tamsa, my eldest daughter, she did a poster and she wrote London, St. Paul's Cathedral, Red Bus, Big Ben and the Savoy. Um, so that's that's what it really? is when you're working in a place like that. It just gets into your full home and uh, your full life. Nice, nice. What, um, so what drinks are you going to make for us today? I'm going to make you a couple of drinks. Uh, I'm going to make a martini uh, with a, a cocktail making at home uh, 
mentality. Uh, and then I'm going to make one of my cocktails or a twist on one of my cocktails because I don't have the exact ingredients in the house um, that appeared on this American bar menu. Fantastic. I'll let you fire away. Cool. Well, um, so I'm going to start off with the martini. Um, and it's a, a stay at home martini, although I believe that the government term now is stay alert martini. Um, and what I want to do with this martini is make a drink that is no stirring, nothing like that at all. And instead, it's going to pretty much make itself. Um, a martini, generally speaking, the tradition was that it was a gin base. Um, however, the majority of my guests order it with vodka. Um, so I'm going to make a vodka martini. I'm going to use this vodka, Boatyard. Um, this is probably the best vodka I've ever tasted, um, but also it's distilled about three miles away from where my mother and father live in County Fermanagh. Um, oh, so wow. it's a product that's got a very special place in my heart. And if you haven't tasted this or their gin, you should, um, because they're real leaders. So well, we're well, going to make a bit, of a, a bit of a batch of, um, of martini. So first off is 50 millilitres. I'm going to do that twice because a second martini always tastes better than the first. <laughs> so we've got two measures there. The ratio of my martini I'm going to do is two to one. Two parts of the, the um, vodka to one part of the vermouth. So this then is going to be two times 25, 50 mils. And because this is a stay alert martini, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add 40 mils of water. And instead of stirring that or doing anything else with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it into this bottle. This is a little bottle and we ordered some burgers the other night and um, from Hello Burger in Bromley. Uh, I live in Bromley, South East London. Um, Hello Burger is a wonderful establishment and um, Tony, the owner, sent us some cocktails in these so I wanted to reuse them. So I've put all that in there and what I'm going to do with this bottle is I'm going to put that in the freezer and in about an hour to an hour and a half, that'll be perfect. You've got the water, um, which is the dilution, the vodka, the vermouth, putting all that into the freezer. And within an hour and a half, this will be quite gloopy, quite thick and perfect. I tend to feel when you're making a martini at home, you're better off using this method. Number one, it's easier. Number two, it's cleaner. But number three, actually probably makes a better martini as well, because um, the dilution is really, really important in a martini. And this is a really controlled manner to do so. Um, and I... For the proportions of the ratios, um, there was 50 mils vodka, 25 mils vermouth, and 20 mils vodka per uh, 20 mils water per serve. There, that's going to go in the freezer, and I'll be drinking that in about 90 minutes. You won't be watching me live um, because I'll be starting <laughs> to get drunk by then. Then on to the next drink. Um, I wanted to make a cocktail um, that was a drink that I've created at the Savoy. Um, Dan asked me to come on to, uh, to do this show, uh, and I thought, right, okay, what shall I make? I watched Nick Ord last week uh, make some amazing cocktails. Um, he's a very creative individual. So I thought I would concentrate more on the storytelling of cocktails, um, because that's a big part of what we do at the Savoy, and it's probably why we're as famous as we are, because we've got so many stories that other people tell about us. The menu um, that I created this drink for was this menu. Um, and I'm just going to come closer to my camera. Sorry if it chops me in a weird, in a weird way, because it was all based on these black and white photos by the photographer Terry O'Neill. Uh, Terry O'Neill himself passed away late last year, um, and I attended his funeral earlier this year. And he was an amazing photographer, and the walls of the American bar are adorned by these um, photographs. The drink that I'm going to make was a drink called Red Lips Rye, um, and the photo I showed you was of Jerry Hall. And it's a black and white photo, but I don't know, when I look at that photo, I could just imagine these really pronounced red lips on her face. And it made me think, okay, what I want to do is I want to do a whiskey cocktail, but I want to make it really friendly and really, really red. So first up, we're going to go with the whiskey. And that is Maker's Mark 46 in this um, instance. 
The drink on the menu was with a rye whiskey mixed as rye. And that is going to be 50 milliliters. I'm going to put 10 milliliters of chartreuse. I have a feeling it's World Chartreuse Day today. There is a world day for everything. And I think it's Chartreuse's turn today. Very cool. Chartreuse is a French liqueur um, with loads of really intense flavors. Um, and it's always going to add a lot of complexity to your cocktails. I don't add a lot of bitters to my drink. Um, and I prefer using things such as Chartreuse. Last but not least, I've made this, again, using my Hello Virgo bottles. Um, this is a port and raspberry syrup. Um, equal parts, port and sugar syrup, infused with raspberries for two, two nights in the fridge at all times. And we're going to go with 20 milliliters. I'm not surprised so, you're eating takeaway burgers every night if you've got a fridge full of booze. No, no. Just, uh, we, we do a treat every now and then. Pretty much every two weeks we're doing a treat. Otherwise, the children would get very sick of our cooking. Um, and then what I've done here as well, I'll show you my ice. Um, I, I don't think it's right to buy ice. Um, so I make it in these um, containers, and it gives you a really nice big block like this. And I'm going to chop this down using my knife. I wouldn't necessarily say just jump straight into that method. <laughs> but good ice is very important to any cocktail. So I'm going to give that a good stir. And then the glass, I'm going to serve this drink out on the rocks. And this glass has been um, has been frozen, so it's chill. I love brown stirred cocktails, such as a Manhattan, Sazerac, etc. But there's nothing better than putting a real um, sexy red hue through a cocktail, and that's what the raspberries do. Oh, wow! Yeah. Nice. So this is going to this is going to be my cocktail for now, and then of course I've got about ninety minutes to wait for that one. Um, so my Saturday evening is perfectly sorted, thanks to you, Mr. Lakin, um, <laughs> and I pass on my best to Laura, who's doing all the work behind the scenes. Um, Laura, the the person behind the scenes, um, I can't say how long ago it was we worked together because it's uh, it's too long a period to mention on camera. Uh, but Laura and I <laughs> always work together. Um, whilst we were working in a bar called Zed in Leeds. Um, hey. Hey. Cheers, Declan. Amazing. Not, yeah. no, <laughs> Amazing. I'm a, I'll tell you what, I've been curious to ask. Um, Savoy, has it got big cellars of wines and champagnes? Because and, it, be, it must be fairly well stocked. Yeah, we are our most um, sort of special cocktail. We have on the co a menu a drink called a vintage Sazerac, and it's a Sazerac uh, made with a cognac from 1863 called Sazerac de Forge. Um, and every time we sell one of those cocktails, we charge five thousand pounds for the uh, um, for the drink, and we have sold a fair few. We actually, wow. to, one guest, um, to one guest, we sold a full bottle of the cognac. We had a spare bottle in the cellar. He was getting married and he wanted the full bottle. And he needed that, oh he needed that bottle pretty quick. So um, it happened that he needed that bottle in Cape Town. So what we did, the bartender who made the drink then got on a plane the next day and flew over to Cape Town and delivered the bottle <laughs> uh, by hand because um, that's what you've got to do, really, isn't it? That's what service is about. That is absolutely incredible. And uh, was that someone famous? Not that you're going to name names, but or was it just someone wealthy? Um, he, he was um, very famous to me because everyone who comes in our bar is famous and uh, 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 he, he will be ever remembered as well because not everyone uh, buys that sort of thing. So... Famous to me. 
Oh, that's, that's incredible. So what's it like being a bar back at somewhere like that? Is it fairly fast paced and hot and sweaty or is it fairly fairly mellow and behind the scenes? No, the bar back rolls and um, probably the toughest bar back roll I've ever seen in the in the Savoy. With it being such a big building, um <laughs> such as where the cellar is compared to where the bar is, that's a big journey. A big journey. Um, and also um, the methods of working in hotels are very different to independent bars as well. So um, the barbacks um, got a lot of workarounds and they got a lot of curveballs during their day. I bet, I bet. I mean, it was uh, quite insane the amount of awards I, I read out. And let's face it, it's probably more. How, how do you even start, you know, stockpiling awards like that? How do you motivate your teams and, and get the staff and everything else that you need to do? Well, I, like... I think that um, when we're going through a moment where everywhere is closed, it all becomes a bit irrelevant anyway. And the most important thing is um, that people keep talking about us. And um, yeah. I think the most important thing we do is our interesting menus, uh, the experiences we give to people. Um, and the awards are just a great way of filling the shelves behind us. <laughs> Save, saving money on buying expensive stock. And stock exactly, buying that. yeah. yeah. But, uh, well, you've always been a smart guy, Dan. <laughs> Declan, I've got to say thank you so much for being with us. I'm, I'm really hoping like you enjoyed it, and just yeah, I just can't thank you enough. It's been an absolute, just an awesome week, just chatting to you every now and again. It's been a long time since we've had a, had a decent conversation, and I've, uh, this has been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, well, let's keep it up. Uh, nice to see you, and uh, me, me, you, and Steve Thomas need to go on another night out, out around London. It's been way too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God for lockdown. I'm going to use that as an excuse for the time being. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, thanks a lot again. We're going to we're going to cut you off there, but you're an absolute star, and uh, I hope to see you soon. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everyone. Look, that was that was a that was an amazing guest. I hope you enjoyed that piece of entertainment. Next week we have Eddie Van Hill live from New York City. He's been a friend of mine, and he's been living over there for five years now. So he's been on the scene for as long as I have, and he's been manning cocktail stations at Sunny Bar in Manhattan recently, amongst other things. And he's got some exciting projects coming up. So we'll be finding out more about Eddie. Uh, might find out more about what lockdown's like in New York City and and generally what he's up to. So can't wait to have an overseas guest live here next week at eight o'clock. Don't forget if you are watching live and you think that someone might be in enjoy, might might enjoy this and they're not watching live, tag them in it and tell them why they should see this, or tag them in next week's and tell them why you should see that. Uh, if you're watching this on a playback, then hashtag cocktails every day. Let us know also what's been keeping you happy throughout this last week because at the end of the day we all need to keep each other happy i'm dan lakin and that's me done thank you